Hello everyone, what's up? This is Rich. This is part two of using the Windows Live Mail client. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Hotmail account or MSN or Windows Live domain or live.com email address or pop in the uh, Windows Live Mail client. We'll start with the Hotmail Windows Live because it is the easiest of the bunch. What we do is click add an email account at the bottom left and we put in your full email address, whether it ends in live.com, msn.com, hotmail.com, or a Windows Live domain account, you put in the full email address. Put in the password, put in the display name. The display name can be your first name, your first and last name, or any name you want. And then uh, as far as manually configure, we can leave that unchecked, hit next, hit finish, and that's it. We click here, and it will start downloading all the mail. Very, very simple. Now let me just delete these folders here. These are folders I was using to test before. The neat thing about using the Windows Live Mail inside the client is that any folders that you make will synchronize with the web-based version, which is very cool. So what I do is I right-click here on the root and left-click New Folder, and I will just make a folder called Testing and hit OK. Oops, hold on one second. Let me just call that actually because I was testing it. Testing 3. So I have a Testing 3. And what I will do is hit the Send Receive. This will synchronize it with a web-based version. And then what I will do is launch a web browser. I will go to the mail. Let me just log out of this to show you as if you were logging in independently. And I will go ahead and log in. Hit sign in. And there is my folder, testing three. Now. What's even better is that if I make a folder here in the web mail interface, it will actually synchronize with the client. So I'll click on manage folders and then I'll click new and I'll make a folder. I'll just call it testing four and I'll click the save icon. I have a folder called testing four. Let me just close this, hit send receive and look at that. Testing four created in the web based version and it imported right into, actually, excuse me, it synchronized right into the client version. Very cool. Any mails that you drop in and out of these folders, whether it be from the webmail version or from the client version, they will all synchronize together. Very, very cool. Let me just remove this. And now, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll show you how to do a POP account. This is the standard Gmail login. We do have to set POP access first in Gmail, so this is going to be my example for POP. I will go ahead and log in. And then what I have to do is click on settings at the top right and then click on the tab. This is forwarding and pop slash IMAP. I will tick the option to enable all, excuse me, enable pop for all mail, even mail that's been already downloaded. Under heading two, we have three options from the drop down. We can keep Gmail's copy in the inbox, archive, or delete. I recommend using either keep in the inbox or archive, and I'll tell you why. If you use delete, here's the inherent problem with that. When you download mail from Gmail, it is deleted off the Gmail server to your local computer. And uh, let's just say one day your hard drive decides to fail. It crashes. You can't get to the data on it. Your mail is gone at that point. You can't get it back. If you have it set to keep it in the inbox or archive it, it keeps a copy of it on the Gmail server so you don't lose it, which is actually good. If you opt to keep it in the inbox, any mail downloaded will keep a copy in the inbox, obviously. If you choose to archive Gmail's copy, what will happen is that every time you download mail, it will put it into all mail over here. And uh, it, it puts it into all mail. It will not be in the inbox. It will actually be in the all mail. Uh, I guess you could call that a folder. It's actually a label, but we'll just you know call it a folder just to keep things simple here. And that's basically it. So I'll go ahead and sign out because I've already set that up. And we're back in the client here. So now I will add an email account. I will put in my email address as my full Gmail address. Put in my Gmail password, my display name. This time around, we will check the box for manually configure server settings for email account. From the drop down menu at the top, we select pop3. The incoming server is pop.gmail.com. Underneath it says, the server requires a secure connection. We want that checked. It will change the port to 995. That is correct. Uh, under log on using, we have clear text authentication. That is correct. 
under login ID, we put in our full Gmail email address. The outgoing server is SMTP, that's Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, dot gmail dot com. Underneath are two checkboxes, one for this server requires a secure connection. The second, my outgoing server requires authentication. We check both these boxes, change the port to 465. Hit next, hit finish. And we'll start downloading mail. Now, there is a disadvantage to doing this, uh, several disadvantages to doing it the pop way. First of all, any folders you create here will not appear on the Gmail side. Uh, in addition, your sent mail will only be in the client. It will not synchronize to the Gmail side. Your labels will not synchronize. Your contacts will not synchronize. This is part of the reason why IMAP is the more desirable of the two options. And in the next video, I'll show you how to do Gmail with IMAP in the Windows Mail client. So stay tuned for that. Take it easy.